Hey, my name is Chris, and we're heading toward week 11 of the NFL season. If you're discovering our channel here for the first time, what we do on Wednesdays is that we will show my preliminary week 11 ranks throughout this program, but we will always encourage you to visit harrisfootball.com to find the latest updates. And then in the meantime, I use the ranks show as an excuse to show you film from players who were interesting and or difficult to rank and see if we can come up with some idea of the variables involved. And I want to start with the Browns running back who returned. I talked about him a little on Monday's show. Let's dig deeper. Kareem Hunt. First of all, let's be clear, Nick Chubb was still the lead back week 10 against Buffalo. This is one of four carries Hunt got all game. And you can see on this traditional handoff, okay, cut to get away at the line, great balance to take on first contact and still keep going and then strength to push for what winds up being nine yards. Here's another nice handoff showing power and balance to get another nine yards down the sideline. But realize two of the four carries, including this one, were kind of in give up mode at the end of the first half. Nick Chubb was the ball carrier for the Browns in this game. Everything else meaningful Hunt did in Week 10 was as a receiver. Here you see him split wide right, basically playing wide receiver. Except for a wide receiver, that guy sure is a good ball carrier, right? He's an exceptional runner who's playing wide receiver. That's dangerous. Here it goes for seven yards. This one's interesting. Hunt is part of Tripp's right He's the inside guy, and they actually motion Chubb out of the backfield, out wide. So the backfield's empty, and Hunt lets the other two guys in the trips formation get away from him, and he kind of runs a little underneath arrow route and makes a catch in traffic again, sort of being treated more like a wide receiver, or in this case, like a slot receiver. On this one, the Browns motion Hunt out of the backfield, but actually before the snap, you'll notice, yep, two running backs two feature backs there in the backfield, both Chubb and Hunt. This was obviously the first foray into integrating Hunt into the offense. They played together a lot. This one turns into a screen, and you know you don't need me to tell you it's the prototypical Kareem Hunt play you remember from his days with the Chiefs, where he's just, you know, he's maybe not the fastest and he's not the biggest, but tacklers have a real hard time getting him on the ground. I mean, this kind of thing, it's a wheel route out of the backfield. I mean, they are trying to use Kareem Hunt to create mismatches. That makes him a playmaker, at least in this game, for Cleveland. They are trying to find a big play with Kareem Hunt. And why not? We've seen in the past, he makes big plays. This one is well defended, maybe a little underthrown. But I certainly like that they're taking the shot. And part of what turned out to be the game-winning drive, first Hunt motions into the slot. I think maybe that was a mistake because then he quickly splits to the wide and he runs a wide receiver route. It's an out route. We know from his Kansas City days, that is something he can do. We've shown you all this by way of putting you in the headspace of how Chubb and Hunt were used in Week 10. They were used together on 28 snaps, and obviously, you can see these numbers, at least for this game, Hunt was the ancillary piece and Chubb had 20 carries. That's why I have Chubb, preliminarily, at number 7 among running backs this week, and Hunt at number 30 in standard, a little bit higher in PPR. But you'll also remember from Monday's show, Chubb struggled mightily in short yardage. Whether that was his fault or his offensive line, I can't promise the way Cleveland uses Hunt on Thursday night against Pittsburgh won't grow. And I would say for all of us who are Nick Chubb owners, it is getting to be kind of a risky game. There's a chance that Nick Chubb's fantasy value suffers because Kareem Hunt not only played a lot, but he was good. Hey, if you're in the market for a new mattress... Don't do anything until you research today's sponsor. That would be Lisa, the makers of My Mattress, the one I sleep on every night and absolutely love. I know maybe you're used to going to a mattress showroom and maybe sitting on mattresses. Well, Lisa can do you one better. They ship direct to your door and give you 100 nights to sleep on your new mattress. And if you don't love it, send it back. Get your money back. No questions asked. Try that with a retail mattress store. Lisa is made in the USA. They donate beds to shelters. They plant trees. They are a certified B Corp. And their product is great. 
So that's my goal before you get a new mattress. Research Lisa.com. I think you'll like what you see. Plus, if you use the code Harris Tube, we'll get you 15% off. For 15% off, Lisa.com. Promo code Harris Tube. Okay, we're back at it using week 11 ranks as kind of an excuse to talk about some guys and look at some film. And I've had a lot of requests to take a look at the Panthers' young receivers, DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. And the question will come, hey, Fartface, why do you have Moore 14th among receivers against Atlanta this week and Curtis Samuel 26th? After all, Samuel is the one with four touchdowns this year. Moore only has one. Why such a big difference? Well, the difference obviously is workloads, 54 catches for Moore, 684 yards. Samuel is 34 catches, 442. But why does it work out that way? Let's dive into tape from last week's game against Green Bay. We'll start with Moore. On this play, he's lined up wide left, and it's tight man coverage, and he knows he has to get to the slant as the primary read on this play. And Kevin King is playing inside technique, so what have you... What do you got to get to the inside of an inside defender? What he's got are three explosive but controlled steps to the outside before planting that left foot and getting to the inside, getting King off of him. You see plenty of times where Moore and Samuel do work underneath against zones, but really I think most anyone can do that. I'm focusing on plays like this, man coverage, tight coverage, when they get targets. On this one, Moore is split wide right, and it's Jair Alexander on him, and again, tight man. And Alexander has no deep help, so he had better stay glued, and Moore comes under control, makes his cut, creates separation for the intermediate cross. It's another good route against tight man coverage, another gain. Okay, fourth quarter, field is getting slippery, Moore is wide left, so it's King again, He has to sell the outside route, but it's a comeback, and it'll wind up being very good body work. Not only does Moore create separation on the stop on a slippery surface, but he kind of dives, falls, collapses a little bit to the inside to adjust to the pass and to box out the defender, make sure that King can't get to the ball. It's very clever stuff, and what I'm selling you here in general with Moore is that he already kind of has the subtleties of that position pretty much down. Unless we think he's not explosive, here it's winning time, a minute left in a blizzard. He's wide left. It's a double move, and watch that. I mean, it gets open. If Kyle Allen throws the ball when he should throw the ball, that is a touchdown, and the Panthers win. So there is no question that Curtis Samuel is faster. That doesn't mean DJ Moore isn't fast. Okay, now to Samuel, who's number 10, uniform number. Here he's wide left, and at the snap... He has moves. You know, that's a move. He gets around Kevin King, but the real magic is he's really fast. He's so fast. And if Kyle Allen were better, this is a touchdown, and that would be awesome. It's underthrown. That's not awesome. But you can see what makes Samuel fun. To say I value him less than more isn't to call him bad or to say he doesn't have weekly upside because he's got a huge ceiling every single week. And in fact, as the snow gets worse, I mean, this play really could be more. uh, Here Samuel is wide left. He runs a comeback route very much like the one we just saw from Moore. You know, these things aren't black and white. Moore can be fast and Samuel can create legit separation running a route, which he does here. Okay, now this one isn't going to be the fairest play to point out because it's slippery with a minute and a half left in the game. But here Samuel is running out of the left slot. And it's not a good enough route. It's kind of a disguised man look from the defense, but Samuel's guy gives him the inside. And if Samuel pushes hard when he gets to the top of his route, and if he gets to the middle of the field, that pass will be on target and it will be a gain. After all, this is the same field that we just saw both Samuel and DJ Moore cutting on. It's not a good enough route. And I hate this one. It's a mental error. It's a little earlier in the same drive. Samuel is wide right, and it's another comeback route. But you can see that things get delayed. The quarterback gets pressured and has to roll. Throws it late. He does throw it. And watch Samuel standing there. You have to come back to the ball. Or you put your offense in real danger. I mean, that should be picked by Jair Alexander. That game should be over. 
So all of this is a microcosm for me, and it's a way of saying Samuel has more speed. He's shifty too. He's a good player. I also think a little unrefined and a little less trustable, whereas Moore is just dead on most of the time. Samuel has also had occasional hands troubles. He got a few drops this year so far, one in a real big spot and a close loss, none of which is to say he's bad. But my ranks are the way they are on these Panthers receivers because of what I've observed on film. Doesn't mean we can't see them go back and forth with production week by week. But if you're asking me in any given week who I prefer right now, it is DJ Moore. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. 